This is League of Legends. Oh, sorry. This is League of Legends. And this is Annie, a character artist for League of Legends. She showed how to create a new character model in a recent YouTube video. But I can't afford to pay hundreds of dollars a month just to use the same program she is using. So I wanted to see if I can create a character on the same level as her, but with a free program called Blender. Annie used ZBrush first to block out the basic shapes of the character based on the references she has. I have imported this reference for my character into Blender and can now recreate it in 3D with some basic shapes as well. I've done this basic block out a lot recently, usually without a one-to-one -one reference, so adding that on top plus the ability to place references right into the 3D environment makes this step even easier. The concept for the character comes from a Reddit post I found in the League of Legends subreddit. You can find the link to it in the video description. The block out of Brenva, that is his name by the way, is done and so far everything is going well. Who says I need ZBrush to block out my character? Now we get to my favorite part of this project, refining the basic blockout using 3D sculpting. Come on Annie, do you really need ZBrush for this? I've done the same a million times in Blender before. I know that ZBrush runs smoother when you want to add small details, but that's not really necessary here. The individual muscles are still very big, so I don't need a lot of geometry to sculpt them. See, that's the problem with people once they build a habit. You may have learned a program years ago to get into the industry, but times change and you know, those programs might not be the best anymore. At some point an alternative might come around and offer the same tools without asking you for your hard-earned money. And with the money I'm not spending I might even, you know, buy a base mesh so I can work even faster next time. Sculpting here? Of course, how about twice? The birds are a bit too complex to sculpt though so I'll just model them with a few curves and modifiers and add them to the beard that way. I have to do that for the rest of the outfit anyway because sculpting them would take way too long. Oh you can sculpt those in ZBrush as well. Well that that does seem pretty convenient. Modeling all the pieces from scratch takes quite a while, but at least by placing each individual point to create a boot, I can make sure that it looks correct. Oh, you can just copy the geometry of the legs to create boots in ZBrush? Okay, I'll give you that one. At least I was able to sculpt some of the pieces in Blender. Okay, Annie, I see why you're using ZBrush. It can save you some time if you're willing to pay the price for it, I guess. Now I need to clean up the model to prepare it for the next steps. She completely skipped over this part in the video, which I can understand. Redibology is by far the most tedious and boring part of the process. I basically have to rebuild the whole model but with less and more controlled geometry to make sure that it doesn't tank the performance in-game and can be animated well. This process can look very different depending on the type of game you're working on, so I grabbed an in-game model of Evelyn, one of the game's characters, to copy the important areas of geometry. As I said before, this process takes a long time and is very boring, so I actually bought a few add-ons that speed up this process for my usual project. But for this one I will not use any of those because, you know, that would be cheating. Okay, the model is clean and ready to be unwrapped. Another stamp, Annie, conveniently skips over. Are you hiding something? To add color to Brenvar, he needs to be brought into the UV space. This image sums it up pretty well. We currently have the chocolate center and need to unwrap it. But right now the model is closed so I need to mark some edges which indicates where it can be cut apart. And once I've done that and hit unwrap again, we get these individual patches of geometry. Now, just like in the game Battleships, if you want to paint the face, you have to paint the area of the 2D square that the face geometry is sitting on. League of Legends actually uses a trick to save time and space on the square, which you can actually see in her video as well. They do that by placing both sides of the character on top of each other so that by painting one side, you paint the other one as well. If only that wasn't so annoying to do in Blender. I have to perfectly place the geometry from one side on top of the other to avoid any issues. But there is an add-on that could do that that for me. Is it really cheating if the add-on is free? I don't think so. Now I can finally add some color to it. League of Legends paints everything including the highlights and shadows onto the model to reduce processing time. She starts by painting on the areas with some basic colors, okay, and then she adds the shadows, highlights and other color variations on top. Okay, this is actually pretty fun. It's like painting but in 3D. It's pretty hard though to shade the model wall to make it look believable. Wait, what is that? Layers? But where's that in Blender? Oh, it doesn't exist in Blender. I mean, if you think about it, is buying an add-on really cheating? I mean, they said they want to add it in the future, so I'm basically just skipping the time it takes them to add it natively. I'm gonna be honest, without this functionality I probably would have never been able to create anything remotely acceptable. I'm not that great at hand painting textures and it's even harder without layers. Yeah, I can fully understand why you're not using Blender for this. While texturing, I kinda got lost in all the details I could add now. Once I've added the basic shadows, I wanted to make sure that most of the things that you can see in the original concept actually make it onto my model as well. For the boots, for example, I added the metal cap at the tip and the golden, uh, 
I stay for the laces. All of this basically follows a simple three-step process. First, I block out the basic color and define the shape. Then I use a darker color to paint in the shadows, followed by a lighter color for the highlights. I actually lost track of time pretty quickly, so I had to rush through the rest to get it done in time. This is the point where any part of the process ends, but I wanted to show off my finished model a bit better, so I also added a skeleton to it. The skeleton works just like any other skeleton or wireframe you sometimes see in puppets. The only difference is that in 3D, after laying out the skeleton, you have to define which area of the model is supposed to follow which bone. But once that's all done, all that's left is to pose the character, add an environment, a shadow, and... Yeah, you can definitely create a lead character in Blender without paying anything, but there are definitely parts where I would prefer another tool that is specialized for the job, or at least an add-on that can alleviate some of the pain. So, any, you're not wasting all of your money. <laughs> if you like this video, you'll also like this one. Click it and see how I remove most of the pain points in this video out of my 3D workflow.